There are going to be two videos in this series. In this video, I'm going to tell you the gear you need to have on hand to be able to load and shoot a black powder revolver. In the second video, I'm going to show you how to actually load that revolver. Uh, and I'm going to show you several techniques and we'll load and shoot. So this video is the gear and let's get to it. Well, you bought your first black powder revolver and naturally you want to get out and start shooting it. And who wouldn't, right? So uh, I'm going to try to show you what you'll need to do that and make it just as painless as possible for you. So before we show you the loading sequence, let me tell you some of the hardware that you ought to get. So first of all, before you shoot your gun, you should have a good set of screwdrivers. Screwdrivers will fit the screws. I use Brownell's gunsmith screwdrivers. Uh, they're well worth the investment because you want a screwdriver that precisely fits the screws so you don't bugger them up. These Italian screws are not the best steel and they put them in pretty tight to start with so they can be hard to get out. So if you don't want to spend the money, and I can understand, if you'd rather buy a $2 hardware store screwdriver, then uh, get one a little bit bigger than you need and rework it, okay? They, hardware screwdrivers, carpentry screwdrivers have like a wedge-shaped bit on them. What you need is a bit, I'll pull out the biggest one I can find. What you need on them are bits like this that are hollow ground so they are parallel sided and they precisely fit the screw slots. Okay, so take your screwdriver, regrind it so it's hollow ground and so that it exactly fits the slot in your screw, both for the width of the slot and the length of the slot. And if you do that, then you'll have screwdrivers that won't burr up your gun. So that's the first thing I think you ought to get. The next thing that you ought to get is a high quality nipple wrench. And this is very important. Now you might say, I don't need screwdrivers or a nipple wrench to shoot the gun, and that's true. But you're going to have to clean that gun. Every black powder gun is going to be cleaned as soon as you're done shooting it. Uh, because the fouling is quite corrosive. I mean, you can wait a day, maybe two days, but no more than that before you get on it. And you're going to have to take the nipples out to clean it. Because uh, otherwise the nipples will end up rusting right in there. You'll never get them out and you'll ruin the gun. So a nipple wrench absolutely important. Now I get mine from Track of the Wolf and they're excellent and that's what I recommend that you do. Track of the Wolf is an online store and I'll put the link down below just like Brownells where I get my screwdrivers. Now you might be tempted to go to the big box stores or go to Cabela's or Bass Pro and get one of these traditions wrenches. Uh, fight that temptation. They are not very well made. The steel is too soft. If you've got a tight nipple, you're going to ruin the wrench. Maybe, maybe ruin the nipple. Get a good one from Track of the Wolf. Get their revolver one. They make them themselves. Uh, and you'll be quite happy that you did. Stay, stay away from these. I, I take these and I repurpose them uh, to make them thinner to, to get on some really small guns. But uh, by and large, they're useless. Okay, the next thing you're going to need, and this is critical, is you're going to need something to measure and dispense powder. Alright, so this is a powder measure. You can get these most anywhere. Uh, once again, Track of the Wolf, Dixie Gun Works will have them. Dixie is an excellent source uh, for most of the stuff that you need. This is graduated in 10 grain increments, and we'll talk about that in a little while, but you can set your powder. I like these with a the built-in funnel because it levels it off and you can pour it in. These are perfect for revolvers. So if you pick up one like this, you will not be sorry. And you absolutely need something to dispense powder and dispense it consistently. Right? Then you're going to need something to carry powder in. Now a lot of guys with revolvers will buy these flasks which have a powder dispenser built right into them. And these are kind of cool. I don't really have anything against them. I have several of them. Uh, they're not as useful as you might think, but they work okay. Uh, they're spring-loaded, all right, so this this opens and closes a little door. There, if you can see that, lets the powder flow into this measure. They come with different size spouts. This is about a 20 grain spout. 
There's about a 20 grain spout. What you do is you put your finger over it, turn it upside down, open the door, close the door, and then it's full of powder. Okay? Now, you can see the powder doesn't come all the way up to the top. And that's one of the problems with these. Because your finger naturally presses into it a bit and takes up some of that space. So, they're not really consistent, but you can load pretty fast with them and, and they're not bad. Personally, for revolver shooting, what I prefer to do is just use a powder can. Now, this is an old style Go-X can. It's a metal one. The modern ones are plastic. I take the plastic cans and pour them into these because if you use one of these cans, you're going to want to get a lid like this. And they sell these for the plastic ones too. So they're size form. You can get them for either size. I've had these for a million years. So I just keep using the metal cans. But they replace the cap and they will let you pour powder into this measure which is very handy at the range. Alright, so that basically is the hardware that you need to have. Now, I also like to use a capper. It makes capping much easier. Uh, and these work well on Colt type pistols, not well on Remington type pistols uh, where they really don't have enough room. But this is made by Ted Cash and it's a, a fast handy way to cap at the range. But it's really optional. You can cap with your fingers uh, and it works just fine. But if you want to get one of these, they are kind of neat. Okay, so that's the hardware you need. Now let's talk about what you need to actually make your gun go bang. Well, you need three things to make your gun go bang. You need black powder or a substitute. You need balls, round balls. And you need percussion caps. So let's talk about that. For powder, you're going to want to use 3FG. That's a fine gradation. It's, uh, it's pistol powder. You can also use it in light rifles. So this will, the number of F's tell you how fine it is. Four F's are priming powder. Two F is rifle powder, larger rifles, muskets. One F is traditionally musket powder. Uh, three F is what you want. Now, I prefer to use real black powder. That's Go-X. There are other brands. the Swiss, the Schutzen. And I get mine from Graf's and Sun. And uh, they're an online supplier. <clears throat> you have to pay a hazmat fee, just like if you buy primers online. But if it's hard to find powder in your neck of the woods, and a lot of places it is, you can always order it online. Now, a lot of you are probably going to be shooting substitutes like Pyrodex or 777. American Pioneer, you know, whatever is out there now. I'm not fond of those because the substitutes all come with some fleas. They, they all have some different issues with them. Uh, and I'm not going to go through those right now. But if you're using a substitute, the important thing is it should be 3F equivalent substitute. And you're going to load it the exact same way that we're going to load black powder. Okay, which means... You're going to use a measure that throws a volume of powder and that's the same volume you're going to use whether it's real black powder or it's a substitute. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute when we get down to loading, but the important thing is to always throw the same volume of your substitute powder as you would be putting in of real black powder. So if the load calls for 20 grains, of black powder, you set this to 20 grains and fill it with 20 grains of Pyrodex. Right, fill that space up. The subs are all lighter than real black powder, so weighing them is no good. You'll, you'll get an overcharge. Okay, so you want powder, number one thing. Number two is balls. Now typically we're gonna load with round balls. This is for 36 caliber. This is for 44 caliber. All right, so you can see a little difference in size there. For 36 caliber, you're going to use 375 inch diameter lead balls or 0 .380 inch diameter lead balls. Either one will work. For, uh, for 44s, I use 0 .454 inch diameter round balls. Now, you're going to see in some of the literature, maybe the literature that came with your gun, that 451 inch diameter balls are what you should use. 
and you can that's the absolute minimum size that will work I don't like using them because if there's a variation in the cylinder size you know manufacturing tolerance is a little off then you might not get a good seal with 451 lead balls because the cylinder is supposed to be 450 and what you need to do is shave a little bit of lead off which I'm going to be showing you to completely seal the uh, chamber so you don't get chain fires across the front and we'll talk about that. 454 does the job every time. It's soft lead, it loads easily. It's not a problem. And that's what I recommend you use. Unless you're shooting a Ruger Old Army, in which case you need 457 inch balls. Uh, but that's the only gun that you need 457 inch balls for. And then you need to set them off with a primer. All right, so that's a percussion cap. These are percussion caps. They go on the nipples of the gun, as we'll show you the cones. Remington number 10s fit the Italian guns perfectly and so do Dynamite Nobles 1075 RCWS You're saying that right? Hmm. Probably not. Anyway, Dynamite Nobles 1075s uh, These are excellent caps. They're a little pricey These are what you need don't use CCI number 10s. They're too tight to fit on the nipples. Don't use CCI number 11s if you can avoid it because they're too loose to fit on the nipples. They'll fall off. You have to pinch them. What fits are Remington number 10s. Number 11s will fit as well. Not as well though. Number 10s are the best. Or RWS number 1075s. Okay, that's, that's what you need to make the gun shoot. Now, optionally, I'm going to show you, you can also load it with these lubricated felt wads, which you can buy from Oxyoke Originals. I make my own. Or, you can grease over the chamber mouths with black powder lube, but I'll show you both techniques. Okay, so that's basically everything that you're going to need to buy or have on hand to be able to load your cap and ball revolver and, and have fun with it. So in the next video in this series, uh, what I'll do is I'll take you through the actual loading techniques. We'll load round balls, we'll load conicals, and we'll load paper cartridges, and we'll show you how to shoot the gun. So stay tuned, and uh, that will be the next video in this series. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, show that you like it, it helps us out. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, uh, I hope that you'll subscribe, we'd really like to have you. And if you are a subscriber and you'd like to support the channel, you can do that over Patreon and uh, we're happy to accept that. It, it lets us do the things that we do. So thanks a lot and we'll see you next week.